from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Inside Politics, sponsored by United Health Group. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. The American Civil War ended more than 150 years ago, yet it continues even until this week to be debated, in some cases, almost refought across the country. For President Donald Trump's remarks this week regarding Andrew Jackson and the Civil War, as well as the controversy spiked in a couple of major southern cities, such as New Orleans and Richmond, as they began taking down some longtime statues to Confederate leaders of the lost cause. Tennessee General Assembly has had its own controversy about the Civil War in recent days. Smyrna Representative Mike Sparks is, is, is at the center of it all. He's our guest on Inside Politics. Representative Sparks, thank you for coming yes, on the show. Thanks for the invite. Uh, this all began when you tried to pass in committee a resolution honoring Samson Keeble, who's the first African-American lawmaker to serve in the Tennessee General Assembly, as well as honor Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest. Now, what made you pair those two together in the great, same resolution? Great question. That's one reason I was glad to come on here. Um, Pat, where I see our culture going is I, I'm a little concerned where people aren't telling the truth about history. And I'm a big history buff, like many of us, and I'm sure yourself included. Uh, and I'm reminded about what Edmund Burke once stated. He said, those that don't know their history are doomed to repeat it. And where I'm seeing things, it really concerns me. I'm seeing folks uh, tear down monuments, talking about digging up uh, dead bodies. That really worries me. Uh, Samson Keeble was from my community, the old Jefferson community. And it's an extraordinary story. Old Jefferson was a, once a city right outside of Smyrna. And it, when the Corps of Engineers came along, they had to, to displace everyone. Everyone had to move. The Corps of Engineers took the property over. Well, how I knew about Samson Keeble was happened to be over at the battlefield, Stones River Battlefield, at but the new why entrance. why in the same resolution? Well, because... We know, we well, know about Nathan Great Baker question. Forrest. Well, Samson Keeble, both of them, what I said, tennis, honoring Tennessee's rich history, which included Samson and included Forrest and Forrest's redemptive story. Forrest, and this is what really amazed me when I started reading about Forrest, I've never really studied Forrest. I never. I, mean, I was born and raised in Smyrna, and I never had really studied. I just heard about it when I was a county commissioner. He probably captured the city hall down there a couple times. During yes, the he war. did, and that, that's what that's what it, that, that's what amazed me about it. Um, but when I read his, when I started reading about him over the over the um, uh, the protest MTSU and that controversy, I just started reading up on him, and I run across a story where he advocated for African Americans, and he had three thousand African Americans attend his funeral. That. That I, I stepped back and I thought, well, what's what's happening here? I said, how come this isn't mentioned? And then I started thinking, how come Samson Keeble's not mentioned? Uh, and then when I spoke at MTSU to all the students, not one student knew who Samson Keeble was. None now, of them knew. Now this first resolution you brought up was mm -hmm. defeated in committee. Uh, you brought a second resolution through through the House. Now the this first one made it through through a uh, House subcommittee. But it did not make it to the House floor. A second yeah. resolution did make it to the House yeah. floor. In fact, it, it was pairing Forrest this time with Pastor Shane Kessler of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Do you have a relationship with, with this particular no, pastor? I just, when why, I read, why pair those two together? Well, I think when I, when I read his story of redemption, when I read Forrest's story of redemption, where he, where he started advocating for African Americans, I thought it was extraordinary. Now, a lot of folks don't like to discuss a lot of these issues because it's it gets very controversial, as you see. Uh, and this story shouldn't be controversial because it's the truth of history. It shouldn't be controversial. But I'm reminded of what um, uh, was it George Orwell uh, was it uh, 1984, and it seems like we've kind of come to this course today. Uh, and I think journalists like yourself, Pat, should be concerned because all I did with this resolution and here's the resolution this resolution simply honors simply honors um, a pastor and and here it is right here if you could read mm -hmm. just read what that says um, materials and recognitions for Shane E. Castle this is me giving when he is on that committee okay yes but it doesn't mention Nathan Bedford Forrest don't mention Forrest Yes, but sir. it's in there, and that's what and that's what angered so many members of the Black Caucus. They didn't realize that was part of the resolution. And okay. you, you've been a lawmaker for a long time. You voted for many, many resolutions up there. Yes. And yes, you're supposed to read all the legislation on your own, but yeah. people do not read the stuff that's on the uh, the consent yes, committee. So you're that's 
didn't, you could understand why some people might feel like a fast you know, one got pulled on them? No, it's not a fast one, though. I mean, I have 25. But they might feel like it was. Yes, sir. But I've got 25 co-sponsors on this, on this bill. Um, so I walked Are around. Are any the, members of the Black Caucus? No, I didn't say I have any members of the Black Caucus sign it. I just had folks sign it that I thought would be interested. But here's a consent calendar just to show you. Um, I mean, if we went through here and debated all... All 27 well, That's today. why it's put on the consent calendar. But, yes, but, sir. But, but did you let any members of the Black Caucus who were upset about your first resolution know that a lot of the same language about forest well, was in the second yeah, I one? Done the, I had G.A. Hardaway on the, radio, on the radio with me back home talking about um, Sampton Keeble and talking about forest. Uh, folks who go to WGNSRadio.com and listen to the interaction. So when, when, when folks act like I hoodwinked somebody, I mean, it's very disappointing, um, especially the things I've been talking about the past, I mean, I've talked about this on the floor openly, uh, and I'm concerned where I see statues and monuments being destroyed. I'm afraid it's gonna come up here to Tennessee. And we just talked off air about Sam Davis, Sam Davis home. There's a Sam Davis monument. Is that gonna be next? I dare say in two to five years, the path that we're on, it's gonna happen. And that's my community. Both these figures, especially Samson Keeble, he was from my area. It's not taught in Black History Month. It's not taught in Tennessee history because I've take, taken Tennessee history. I didn't know about it in school. And I was born in Smyrna. This guy was born just two miles from where I was born. There is some strange irony with Keeble. But in terms of Samson Keeble, Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't bring. Are you bringing a separate resolution back for him? He, well, I, I am next next year. Yes, next I year? did. I met with the Black Caucus. I met with the Black Caucus on these two resolutions, and I separated Samson from Forrest out of respect for them, and I run it on Samson. And this is the irony. This is what I want your your viewers to know. They turned down Samson Keeble. Why would they turn down Samson Keeble? Well, they're the same bill. They no, it's separate. About. No, it's separate. Totally separate. It was a it was a new bill, which is an amendment that rewrote that whole bill. It's just honoring Samson Keeble. Why would somebody be afraid of Samson Keeble? Let's take a break. We're talking to Representative Mike Sparks of the Smyrna area about a controversy going on up on Capitol Hill about the Civil War. I'd like to continue our conversation after this break. This is a Storm Five HD weather update. Sign up for Weather Call at NewsChannel5.com. It's been a cold, wet, windy day across Middle Tennessee and Kentucky, and unfortunately, this rain is not scooting out of here very quickly. So expect persistent stubborn showers as we head into the evening hours tonight and much cooler temperatures. You add the rain and the wind to the actual temperatures, and it has felt quite fall-like. Makes you want a big bowl of soup. Here's a look at temperatures across the southeast right now and current conditions right here in Nashville. Overnight tonight, you guessed that it's going to be another cold one, but not the coldest of the next seven. 44 degrees overnight tonight. That's where we will bottom out tomorrow. There will be some sunshine, but there's also an opportunity to see a brief passing shower or thunderstorm, especially for folks east of Interstate 65 during the afternoon hours tomorrow. Not going to last all day, but you may need to navigate a shower, a brief shower or thunderstorm. Top temperature 70 on Saturday, 69 sunshine. If you want to shed the fat and sculpt your body to get that slim, sexy look of your dreams, then you need to stop working out. Say what? And start rocking out with Rockin' Body, the fun new body makeover system that was created by fitness expert and insanity creator Sean T. Rockin' Body combines dance and fitness in a fun new way so you can achieve insane weight loss. I lost 30 pounds. Dancing. Now you can tone and tighten your abs, shrink and shape your hips and thighs, and lift and firm your booty, all while you're just dancing. I've lost 33 pounds. I feel sexy. And now, for a limited time, the complete $80 Rock and Body system is 75% off. That's right, Rock and Body is only $19.95. We'll even upgrade you to express shipping free. Get the complete Rock and Body system for only $19.95. Call 1 800 307 0417 or order online at rockandbody.com. 1-800-307-0417. Call now. Colin Farrell from The Beguiled. It's a bit of a thriller, a bit of a drama, a bit of a hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> Next, New Ellen. Colin has agreed to reveal something that he's never told anyone. So I was doing a sex scene. <laughs> Plus, Fifth Harmony's Normani Corday. And these twisted sisters. I'm literally flying away. We can see who the dramatic sister is. <laughs> Monday at 3 on News Channel 5.
Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today, State Representative Mike Sparks from the uh, Smyrna area. Representative Sparks, um, have you mended or repaired your relationships with members of the Black Caucus? You oh, told yeah. me off camera that yes. you had been one who had stood up with them last year when there yeah. was an issue down in the Murfreesboro yes, area regarding well, some children being arrested. Yes, um, I just you left have not them. damaged that relationship. Well, a couple of them were probably a little mad, and I and one came up to me the other day. He said, "I think it was just a mistake," and I said, "You're mad at me." He says, "No, I'm not mad." I said, "Yeah, you are. You're mad." You know, but this this discussion about history, I think should be out there and it shouldn't be history shouldn't be controversial truth shouldn't be controversial but back what you mentioned last year i did stand with the black caucus i think i'm the first republican that they know of that's still with the black caucus and the irony with that was one i, I knew there was a reason for me standing with the black caucus bigger than at that time i knew it had to be something for something like this today uh, I stood with them because of the, the, the young boys that were arrested at the Hob, Hobgood Elementary School. I happened to be running a bill on juvenile justice. You know, if a five-year-old or a 17-year-old is arrested, they don't have to contact their, their parents or have a, an attorney present. And I think it's an issue that needs to be addressed. I didn't have the, the support on that, on that bill. Uh, I probably had the support from the, from the Black Caucus on that bill overwhelmingly. But when they asked me to stand with them, you know, I stood with them, and it was kind of odd. I, no one criticized me for standing with them. Um, earlier, I'd just seen um, Jim Henry, the chief of staff for the governor, and I, I you know, went to his wife's funeral. And oddly enough, I drove Senator Thelma Harper there. You know, it was kind of strange, and we stopped and ate at Cracker Barrel, and she's supposed to come eat at my mother-in-law's house. And, you know, folks know Senator Harper. She's, I call her a country girl, and my mother-in-law is a pretty good cook, so she's supposed to come over, and, and I say, you want some real good cooking, you eat my, my mother-in-law. So she's supposed to come up with my mother-in-law's. But it is kind of strange, but this is what saddens me with the media today, Pat, is that, you know, they've really, in my opinion, created fake news. Well, what have you heard from your constituents? You have a fairly significant African-American and Hispanic yes, sir. Yes, sir, population. I do. Yes, sir. How, I have how, almost 10,000. What's the reaction been? Well, I just left a, a prayer vigil just now, and they asked me to speak, and it was the it was an African American um, pastor, Pastor Brenda Bryant, that put it together. And uh, sadly, her church burnt, uh, burned down two years ago, and Channel Five covered it. And uh, I helped her with a GoFundMe project, and also helped another African American church, Word of Life, that was literally locked out um, by the city over an easement dispute for two years. And Pat, the strange thing with this, and this is what I want your viewers to know, I had to beg a journalist to cover a black church that was locked out for two years. I wrote to NAACP, I never heard from them. I told Heidi Weinberg with ACLU, I said, how come you didn't come to their defense? They were locked out for two years. A white church, Giles Creek Baptist, Pat, built this church in Laverne. Sadly enough, they're out $56,000 in mortgage payments. I called the pastor from the house floor about a year and a half ago or two years ago, I said, I said, uh, uh, Pastor Wellington, Wellington Johnson, I said, I said, Pastor, what are you, where are you at? What's the latest on your church? He says, I, I think I'm going to let it go. I said, you can't let your church go. That's where we're at today. Our Constitution, the First Amendment right, I should be able to honor a pastor without controversy. That black church shouldn't be locked out. It was locked out. So all this gets down to the First Amendment, going back to what I said, what George Orwell talked about. Seems to me almost every year, these last few years, the General Assembly has gotten into some controversy surrounding the Civil War. There's been the Nathan Bedford Forrest bust, mm -hmm. there been other things. Why is that? Well, this is the first controversy I've ever been involved in, you know. And, and you hope and, the last? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, it won't be the last, but you know, the sad thing about it, I'm. I'm really closer with some of the members of the Black Caucus, oddly enough, and, and Representative Joe Towns, who I think, I think the world of Joe, he sits in front of me, I think the world of Larry Miller, G.A. Hardaway, Antonio Parkinson, um, and they know I'm passionate about history, but about a month ago, we honored the Memphis Bell. You know, we made that the, the official aircraft for the state of Tennessee. Well, my dad flew 24 bombing raids in a B-17 over Germany, was shot down uh, once, crash landed twice, and um, the B-17s were, that was a training base, Smyrna Airport was a training base where I was born. So that's why I care about this. Well, I stood up on the House floor and said, Sam, uh, uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest's great-grandson was shot down over Germany in a B-17, piling, piling a B-17. Folks don't know this. Well, Joe was a little upset about it. And I said, Joe, this is just history. 
You can't get upset with history. This is the truth. And if we're going to put, we can't put a false narrative out there because these young people today, if they keep hearing these false narratives, no wonder we have division in the streets. Maybe if people knew the truth, maybe people wouldn't be so divisive but today. But you knew the Nathan Bedford Forrest name alone would be a flashpoint for any legislation that, that talked about him. Usually an yeah. ounce, of, uh, ounce of sugar is, is the better way to well, go at it. Do you, well, do you wish I, you had gone back and talked to some people and explained what I, you were trying beforehand? So beforehand? I, met, I met with the Black Caucus. I met with the Black Caucus. And? So I separated the resolution. I totally separated. So this, this whole controversy is not about Nathan Bedford Forrest. Really the controversy boils down to me recognizing an author who wrote a book and he's a Christian. He but happened to write the, a book. It was the subject of his book, not the author himself. But that shouldn't be under our First Amendment, Pat. That should not be a problem. I have another book that I'm recognizing a gentleman. He doesn't know I'm, I'm doing it. I have the book here. Um, he, won't know, he doesn't know about this resolution until probably next week. It's a surprise. He happened to write a, uh, a column about Forrest last month. So do we ban his book now? If we're going to ban this guy's book, do we ban this next journalist's book? Or are we going to ban Pat Nolan down the road because you covered somebody who's controversial? <laughs> That's where this, these things are going. Uh, one of those you mentioned earlier was Sam Davis. Uh, for yes, people sir. who don't know, he was known as the boyhood hero of the Confederacy. Yes, sir. He was hung by the North as a spy after he was captured and refused to release any information. Yes, sir. What has made him such an enduring Civil War figure, at least in Tennessee? Well, you know, that, that story, it, it's, it's, it's close to my heart. You mentioned you, you had some field trips there. Well, I was the only kid in my fourth grade class that didn't get to go to the field trip. I didn't have the $5. And that always stuck with me. And the strange thing uh, that was strange, a TA member reached out to me, a teacher my old school, took me to my same classroom. She didn't know about this, that I didn't get to go to this field trip. After I was at that classroom about four years ago, I was speaking at War Memorial, introducing Douglas Henry, the late Douglas Henry, on behalf of the 150th anniversary of Sam Davis. So I was thrilled about that. But what always stuck with me is probably being that young fourth grader that didn't get to go to this field trip. And to some people, it may be like, well, Mike, you need to get over that. But those things stick with you in life. Your background shapes the things that you are passionate about. I'm passionate about history, passionate about many other issues, and um, the Sam Davis home is uh, uh, is just basically a focal point for the town of Smyrna, and it's something that needs to be uh, remembered. We were able to help them with um, a grant from the state, Senator Kitcher and I, for 10000 to try to help um, uh, with the home, the, uh, keeping it in good shape, but it's something we need to remember. Representative Mike Sparks is our guest on Inside Politics. We've been talking about the state legislature and the Civil War. They're two different things. They're 150 years apart, but there's still controversy over both. Talk to you. We'll be back in just a few minutes to continue our conversation. Whether a house is new or whether a house is 20 years old, we can go in and we can find debris in the lines. Mr. Bees is about doing duck cleaning the best that we can do it and better than anybody else in the industry. That's what I personally stand behind and guarantee. We never make a claim that we're going to help your health. That's just something we don't do. But again, I personally believe that if I put you in a cleaner environment, it's got to have a positive impact on you. So we literally cut a hole into the main trunk line. That's the main artery, just like a tree trunk. And we attach a HEPA vacuum system to it. All right. When we do that and turn it on, it causes a negative airflow. As that machine's sucking everything backwards, we go to each line and we'll brush it, and then we air sweep it down to the trunk line. So we've taken everything back to that negative airflow. So again, whether it's upstairs or downstairs, you saw that everything is being brushed and air swept to the trunk line, not bringing it back into your breathing atmosphere. What makes my home need an air duct cleaning? You have to make that decision. It's your environment. So if you have black lines at the edge of your carpets or you have any sort of dust, excess dust in your home that you're dealing with and that's a problem for you, then you definitely would want your air ducts cleaned. But most people understand too that if they'll just look down the return, take the filter out a little bit and look down the return, they'll see all the dust that they're breathing on an everyday basis. The way we do the cleaning, most residential homes will be good for five to seven years. We do recommend that you have your system serviced by a licensed contractor and also use a good filter.
We've been doing this for over 17 years now. We take pride in the fact that we have an A-plus rating at the Better Business Bureau. Also the fact that we don't believe that anybody's going to outclean us. And as I've said before, people can outprice me, but they're not going to outclean me. There's only one way, and that's the right way, and that's what we do at Mr. B's Air Duct Cleaning. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. Back on Inside Politics, our guest today, Representative Mike Sparks from the Smyrna area. Representative Sparks, uh, President Donald Trump this week made some remarks about uh, Andrew Jackson and the Civil War. You, like you, and both of us grew up in Tennessee. We've always been interested in Andrew mm -hmm. Jackson. But did you ever think that Andrew Jackson had anything to do with the Civil War? He was dead yeah. 16 years before um, before it was fought. Yes, sir. I, I never did either. But I, as a as a youngster, we always admired Andrew Jackson. Um, I was with uh, Donald Trump at the Hermitage, m me and probably 60 other legislators, and, and many Democrats were there, and it, it was a r very cold day. Um, but I could tell that he connected with, with Andrew Jackson. Uh, do you think that perhaps President Trump was somehow confusing uh, with the nullification crisis that Jackson won over John C. Calhoun, was, which was over trade yeah. in the 1830s, and somehow he got that confused with being involved because he, that was about nullifying a federal act. Yes, he, he may he may have, but I can tell you, uh, Pat, watching watching him speak in front of the Hermitage, in front of that front door, and he talked about Jackson, his Irish heritage, and and I guess the the big banks back then. You could tell that he connected with. Um, with Jackson, no doubt. Uh, I noticed an interview about a month ago with um, with uh, at the White House, and behind him was the same statue that we see up here at the state capitol of Andrew Jackson on top of the horse. Uh, but it's also in New Orleans. Y yes, sir. And you know you're seeing pushback against Andrew Jackson too. But that that is history. And and the strange thing, Pat, is you see even a group like ISIS that's that's tearing down monuments. You've seen this in Germany um, back during 19 back in the World War II era, era. And I just feel like people should remember the, the past. We've talked about what's going on in other cities. We've talked about New Orleans, Richmond, and even Memphis have been taking down some of these post-war monuments mm -hmm. that were built to major figures in the Confederacy. Uh, there are lots of several Civil War related paintings and busts up on the hill. Should those continue to stay there? It would take a long, very long and controversial process to remove them, but should Tennessee have a debate about that? Well, I know we've had much of that debate. Steve McDaniels, uh, Representative Steve McDaniels, has led much of that discussion. Senator Bill Ketron with the, uh, I think it was the Historical Act Preservation, I, think, I believe it was passed in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, and I try to put myself in other shoes. Uh, but if we're feeding people a false narrative, uh, and that's where I think we've been fed a false narrative. Er, this story that I've tried to bring apart is a story of redemption. And, and that author that I want to recognize talked about Nathan Bedford Forrest's redemption. And all of us, whether you're a lawmaker, uh, have made mistakes in life. And there's, as a Christian, there's a redemptive story in all of us who are Christians. And I think there was a redemption, redemptive story with um, with Nathan Bedford Forrest, and that's all my resolution did here. You could look at this, it's, it's about Shane Castor. It happens to mention he wrote a book, and for this to be controversial, and what I'll call fake news, which really I welcome it, Pat, because people wouldn't know about this story of redemption. They wouldn't know about his book without this controversy. So the controversy really has been Have a Have you blessing. spoken to him about it? What does he think about it? Have you spoken well, he, to him directly? The, the author was like, hey, I'm sorry I got you in all this kind of trouble. I said, no problem. I mean, but but as a Christian, you know, God will use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the weak to shame the strong. So this this controversy has really been a blessing because I wouldn't be here with you discussing this issue about Sam Zakeeble, the first black lawmaker, if it wasn't for this controversy. Now, the statue of Sam Davis we mentioned earlier it is quite prominent on the it hill. Is it's right there prominent. at the corner of 7th and Charlotte. I mean, yes, it's sir. very visible from right there. Mm -hmm. uh, you're concerned that there's going to be an effort perhaps to I, I am concerned. move it down? And and it what is before Are this. you surprised it hasn't there hasn't been an effort already? No, well, I, I feel like it's going that way. I do. I was at a, a veterans service about